has been warning us all for weeks that big changes are coming to how your kids get to school on buses in Jefferson County. And tonight we learned that a final vote on this will come early next year. Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining us on the night team. I'm Doug Prophet. WHS 11 night team's Taylor Woods and photojournalist Elijah McKenzie with our top story. We also got a new update tonight since that transportation disaster on August 9th. Taylor, what'd you learn? Well, Doug, in an update tonight, Superintendent Marty Polio says they're making progress on improving transportation this year. 7,500 no-show bus stops are removed and 11 new bus drivers will be out on the road September 30th. But much of the focus is now on what's next for transportation and JCPS. Um, I just think the community needs to know that, you know, the days of all students being transported to all schools is is at the end of that road. Superintendent Marty Polio looking to the future, sharing four transportation considerations. Option one, transporting all magnet and traditional students via magnet hubs. Those would be locations in the community where families would drop off their students to get on the bus. Magnet and traditional parents in the East End, and I think a lot of people are excited about the hub idea as opposed to just losing transportation, which they know is also on the table. Two other options would only transport free and reduced lunch students at Magna and traditional schools. A fourth eliminates transportation to all Magna traditional students, but a final decision won't come for several months. Have a month or two, six to eight weeks of communication uh, with the community and then vote you know, late February, early March. Also up for discussion, behavioral issues on the buses. At the podium, one parent explained how her child was beaten and held at gunpoint when getting off at the wrong bus stop. Are y'all keeping the same data for the parents who call and talk about their students being hurt in JCPS or on the bus stops? Dr. Polio says JCPS loses about 75 to 100 drivers a year. Board member Linda Duncan says it's time for the board to act drive Drivers, what is turning them away? If it is behavior, what can we do to stop this from driving our drivers away? Board member Sarah McIntosh says she also hears about violent behavior on the bus from drivers and students. I just want to echo that that is the number one thing that I hear mm -hmm. about from staff members, parents, bus drivers, other students. All agree input from everyone involved will be important moving forward with any changes. Now, as we told you last night, the board was expected to approve payments of preschool parents who will drive their kids to school. They did approve that stipend tonight. It's $5 a day for parents and guardians who don't use school buses. And parents must sign up to get the payments, which will be at least $25 a week. In studio, Taylor Woods for the WHAS 11 night team on your side. All right, Taylor, thank you very much. Also tonight, the district introduced its new executive administrator of security and investigation investigations, retired Louisville firefighter and LMPD major Todd Kessinger. Right now, JCPS has 10 security monitors, 10 sworn officers and 14 school safety officers. While six recruits are in the pipeline, there are still 10 vacancies. Kessinger was asked tonight how quickly those vacancies can be filled. For one, we want to bring in the first group. We want to get them uh, equipped. We want to get them trained and we we'll get them out on the streets. And, and then we also just don't, we don't want to hire the next we want to find the right people for the job. Uh, so I hate to put a timeline on it. I think that we could fill it pretty quickly. JCPS plans to start installing its first phase of the weapons detectors next month with high schools getting the devices first. Also new tonight, teachers in Greater Clark County, Indiana schools are getting a raise. The school board there in Southern Indiana approved a new two year contract for 2023 through 2025 over the next two years. Teachers will receive a $5,000 raise in addition to more pay for positions with extra duties. Teachers in Southern Indiana will also be paid more for any leave days they have not used at the end of the year. The Greater Clark County School District says that their starting pay for teachers next school year will be $48,000 a year. Also new tonight, people living in Old Louisville and surrounding neighborhoods had a chance to take their concerns about homelessness directly to top city leaders. Right order it has to be a clean, safe neighborhood. We can't have needles. Somebody gave them a needle, and then they throw it in my yard where my kids play. With Metro Police Chief Jacqueline Gwynn Villarreal right there in the audience and members of the administration on stage, neighbors shared experiences and suggested solutions. 
there in Old Louisville. It was part of a town hall organized by council member Philip Baker. Some called for more police intervention, while others say the city should stop clearing homeless camps. Every time you move somebody, every one time you force someone out of an area and we can't put them in permanent housing, you're making the situation worse for everyone in this community. I would also ask us to consider the damage that is done when someone is sheltering unsupported in open land that is oftentimes not well maintained and comes along with a whole lot of environmental concerns to begin with. Councilmember Baker tells us he's working with the mayor, city agencies, and community groups to find solutions to address the concerns. Kentucky lawmakers are getting involved in efforts to combat violent crime in the state, especially right here in Louisville. Today, State House Republicans unveiled what they're calling the Safer Kentucky Act. It's an 18-part proposal with goals to increase police presence and heighten penalties for offenders. Among the suggestions, creating a three strikes law to sentence offenders to life without parole if they have two previous violent felony convictions. The proposal would also establish a Kentucky State Police post right here in Metro Louisville and require parents to attend juvenile court hearings. The primary sponsor representative Jared Bauman says the proposal is necessary. Honest law abiding citizens who have skimped and saved to pay for a house in a community they love now feel unsafe in their own homes. Parents are concerned for their children and businesses face loss after loss. If we do not do something now, things will only get worse. Bauman represents Southwest Jefferson County. The bill is still in the early stages of being drafted with planned opportunities for your input. Tonight, a man is charged in connection to a murder that happened at Westport Village in eastern Jefferson County, not accused of killing a woman, but for helping the suspect in this case. James Boer Jr. is charged with facilitation to murder in the death of Ashley Yates. Police say Yates's former boyfriend, Zachary Hines, shot and killed her in June before then taking his own life. In court documents, detectives say they discovered that Boer had sent photos to Hines, showing him where Yates was just 20 minutes before the shooting. Investigators say they also found messages from Boer where he said he was on a, quote, recon mission on Yates because Hines, quote, had an issue with her. Detectives have also arrested a woman for a shooting we told you about last night in the Shelby Park area that left another woman dead. Kenise Phoenix is charged with murder after investigators say surveillance video showed her shooting the victim on East Oak Street at a liquor store parking lot, then leaving the scene. In arrest documents, officers say they searched Phoenix's home and found the same clothing she wore in the video, as well as ammunition that matched the shell casing right at the scene. And we have more right now on the breaking news. We showed you right at the top of the night team last night live at 11. We've learned now that a fiery crash on the Gene Snyder Freeway started out as a police chase from southern Indiana. Images from Trimark cameras show the vehicle on fire. This was about 10 o'clock last night right at I-71 and the Gene Snyder. Major Isaac Parker with Jeffersonville Police tells us the chase started when officers tried to stop a suspect wanted on several outstanding felony warrants. Jeffersonville officers and Clark County, Indiana deputies chased the suspect who drove into Jefferson County before crashing right here at this exit. Again, I-71 and the Gene Snyder. Major Parker says the suspect tried to run from the scene, but a police canine caught him. He was treated at the hospital for dog bites, but is now booked in the Clark County Jail. A judge has ruled that the lawsuit against the Louisville Urban League from its former CEO can now continue in the courts. Dr. Kish Kumi Price says she was wrongfully terminated after four months on the job when she started looking into the league's financial records. Judge Melissa Logan Bellows denied the league's motion to dismiss the lawsuit, saying it has enough merit, merit to go forward. Discovery will likely be next, which should include the reason why Dr. Price was fired. In Kentucky, the law is that you, you, you err on the side of letting people come to court. You err on the side of letting cases proceed so that justice can be obtained. And I think Judge Bellows hit it right on the head. We contacted lawyers, by the way, for the Urban League this evening, but we have not heard back as of news time.